What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in this video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the second week of April in 2019. I'm also going to be talking about some stocks and ETFs that you guys actually called out in the call out section in our Discord group chat, as well as some that I got DM'd on Instagram and some that you actually commented on the video from this past Friday. So typically every Sunday I do a video like this where I go through the top stocks and ETFs that I'm watching for the upcoming week. So if you're new to the channel and you enjoy content like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you want to repay me in some way from, for the value that I'm providing for these videos on YouTube, all you can do is just simply hit that like button. It really supports me and supports the channel in general. And I really do appreciate everybody out there for doing that. So let's talk about very quickly what happened last week in the S&P 500 so we can get an understanding of where the markets can be pushing this week on a technical basis. So we all know by now, especially those who have been avidly watching, you know, the markets have been watching my videos every single day, that the markets over the past couple of months, really the whole year of 2019 so far, have been on an absolute tear, right? From 2340 the low that we hit the day after Christmas around the end of 2018, you know, all the way up to now, which is nearly $2,900, we've been, you know, really making that push all the way back to those all-time highs that we saw, uh, you know, towards the end of, uh, you know, September 2018, towards the beginning of October. And we noticed how this past week, we ended up pushing to another higher high here at about 28.92, I believe. Yup, that's where we ended up closing on Friday. That's the level that we're currently at right now. And just like I've been saying over the past couple of videos, guys, the more and more, you know, we're pushing up in this market, the more and more I personally believe that we're going to see a retracement because remember these gains that we are seeing we're up nearly 20 percent in the markets right now these are unsustainable in my personal opinion and we're going to see in the near future again in my opinion do your own research we're going to see a pullback to you know a, a healthy pullback right i don't know exactly where we're going to pull back to nobody out there knows exactly but I'm thinking maybe a 5% pullback to get us back down maybe to 2700. This is just a, uh, you know, hypothetical right here guys. Maybe down to this level, maybe down to 2600. Something is going to happen here where we're going to see a pullback in the near future again in my personal opinion, which is why, you know, the more extended the markets are getting, the more cautious I'm going to be especially with my long-term investments and especially with my swing trades. So I just wanted to say that in the beginning of this video for everybody that's been watching. And we notice how every time we've pushed to a higher high in the SPX, we've plateaued and we pulled back. So one thing to just keep an eye on is that the RSI is very overbought. We're at that point in time where we push to that higher high. And technically speaking here over the past couple of months, every time we've done that, again, we've plateaued, we've consolidated, and we pulled back. So be mindful of this heading into this week. And let's just start off talking about these stocks that I do have listed here on my notes tab, starting off with Tesla. And for those of you guys that have been following the channel here for the past couple of days, I feel like I've been talking about Tesla more than any other stock because honestly, it's just been an interesting stock to watch, especially this past week. We saw Elon Musk in court again, right? We saw the Model 3 missed deliveries. We saw, you know, sales are down 31% over the past year in terms of Tesla. There's a bunch of things, you know, regarding the company. And of course, the stock price has been affected due to this. So we saw Tesla last week hit about 296 per share. We were right at the top of this, uh, you know, downwards channel here. We were at the resistance of this red trend line that we're seeing also at the 180 simple moving average. And that news came out, I believe that was on Wednesday or Thursday, and the stock ended up tanking all the way down to about $260 where it found the support on this downwards trending support line. 
right, where, where we've been able to, historically speaking here, hold above at 290, also 282, roughly 271 here at 265. We dipped a bit below it here to touch 250, but ultimately we ended up popping right above there. And now the fact that we hit 260 here exactly, right, which again is the support of this downwards trending line, we popped up above it. That is telling me here as a technical trader that, okay, we've hit support. We're looking to push back up and maybe we can end up getting back up here to the previous resistance which again is the 180 simple moving average and Tesla's actually one that I bought in on that day where we ended up tanking and if we can see here on the five day five minute this is exactly that day we tanked we hit 260 I ended up buying in roughly at about 266 265 right around here and for those of you guys that watched my video on Friday I actually took half of my profits on Tesla shares I believe it was around like 274, 275, something like that. I took half of the shares in profit due to the due to it being a nice little overnight push there, but I wanted to keep roughly half of my shares so I can have some exposure for this upcoming week due to the pattern really having a lot more juice in it in my personal opinion, right? From 275 up to where that previous resistance was at around 282 to 285, that's about $10 extra per share share here that we could potentially end up filling if we do follow the pattern that I think is very possible that we could follow, right? But one thing I want to point out is we're right under this 50 simple moving average resistance right now at the close of the market on Friday. So keep an eye on Monday and this entire week, guys. If we break above this level, that's going to be a huge technical point that okay, we might be pushing back up to this level into the 280s, right? This is a resistance right now, 280. We all know that from a couple of weeks ago. It was a previous support right around here, and we broke below it, making it a new resistance. And if we break the 280 level, the 285 level right under that 180 SMA, I think is going to be very, very attainable. So Tesla is one I'm watching for this upcoming week. Facebook is the next one that I've been talking about here over the past couple of days, and it's looking like we're consolidating super nicely here on a previous resistance at around 174-ish dollars here, and we all know when a resistance is broken, uh, broken above, right? We broke the resistance it becomes a new support level. And how do I know it's a new support level? Because take a look at this, guys. We actually tested that level once here. We bounced above it pre-market hours heading into the market open. And now we're still hovering around that 175 level, which really confirms to me that we bounced on it once and we're still maintaining above it. So this, on a technical speaking level here, is a support level. And the next spot where I want to see Facebook potentially go here is is going to be around $180. So we're, you know, we're kind of trading in between this little horizontal channel from 175 up to $180. And let's say we hop in on, on a swing trade here on Facebook, maybe at around $176 to $177 hypothetically here. And we ended up breaking above the 180 resistance. The next spot I'm going to be looking for us to go is going to be around $185, which is the next next resistance. And if you guys, you know, are more of swing traders, this is something that you should be doing on your charts. And really, just draw out resistances and support levels. That's what I'm talking about here. Just draw these out, guys. This gives you a much better understanding of the technical levels of the stocks you're watching, the index indexes you're watching, the futures, the ETFs, whatever you're watching. This gives you an understanding of where to buy potentially and where to sell potentially based on previous resistances and previous supports. So Facebook right now, I think it's very nice uh, on a technical speaking basis here. But be careful if we break this level of support, you know, the next level I want to see it hold above at least is going to be $172. And at that point, I'm going to have to reevaluate the trade and uh, make a new plan from there pretty much. So Facebook is the second one I'm watching here. Let's talk about Apple very quickly, AAPL. Not too much to say on this one. It's kind of in a similar spot as Facebook, right? We're trading in this horizontal um, channel right now from about $195 to about $200, just like Facebook is trading between that $175 to $180 level. So in terms of Apple, this is very simple, right? We got to see 
and really watch, are we going to maintain the 195 support right now? This is something that's very crucial on a technical, uh, on a technically speaking basis here. If we do end up holding this, let's say we get a little pullback on Monday, we maintain it and we start to pop back up. I think this could be a good entry point to the next resistance, which is going to be at $200 per share so keep an eye on apple not again not much to talk about apple here but also be mindful of this rsi since we've had seen a couple of straight days here with minimal pullbacks that's why i'm saying if we do pull back and retest this level of 195 that would be in my personal opinion again please do your own research a solid entry point for Apple because it's going to bring us down. The RSI is going to be down. We're going to get more margin of profit if we do enter at a lower price to the next resistance. Everything is going to be looking good there in my personal opinion. So that is Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. FNKO is actually one that a subscriber ended up shouting out and also a member in our Discord group chat. Uh, group chat. And let's just hop over here to the drawings very quickly, and we can go to this little money sign here that says price level, and we can draw out some resistances very quickly, some support levels, so we can start and see, you know, what, what are we looking at here in terms of technical analysis, right? It's super important when you're looking to trade, swing trade. Again, draw these lines out. You get a better understanding of price action, previous support levels, and previous resistance levels. So one thing I'm noticing here on Funko Inc ticker symbol FNKO is that we successfully broke above a old resistance, which is at around $21. We've maintained it as a new support. We're maintaining the 50 simple moving average as well. And if we just hop back over here to the drawing tools, get this trend line, take a look at this, guys. Really over the past you know, month, month and a half here, really since the beginning of uh, 2019, this stock has been recovering very nicely from its downward um, pattern here from you know towards the middle of uh, September down to the end of 2018. Not only is this telling me that we're seeing a bullish reversal, right? We're no longer seeing the 50 SMA acting as a resistance. We're now seeing, you know, this is a uh, breaking out of the 50 SMA, holding it as a new support. And again, we're breaking out of this old resistance, maintaining that as a new support as well. And this past Friday, it seems like we pulled back or Thursday, rather, we pulled back, retested that 50 SMA. And on Friday, we had a nice 1.4% day, continuing the push to the upside. So this is really um, on a technical speaking basis right here. This is looking very, very solid in my personal personal opinion. So take a look at this now, guys. If you're looking back over here, back to the uh, August resistance levels, let's go back over here. FNKO is actually at another resistance right now from back in August, towards the beginning of August in 2018. So this, in my opinion, if we break out of this level, let's say into the $22 level, I think that's going to be a huge bullish move for FNKO. And from there, we can potentially test back up to at least $24, which in this case, that's another resistance that we're going to be looking at. Actually, no, roughly $23 because this is an old support from back towards the end of August. So keep an eye if we break this level of 22 from 22 to 23, that could be a nice trade. And if we break $23, we can be shooting right up to $24.50. So that's what I'm looking at in terms of FNKO. Let me know down below in the comment section what you guys think about this one. I really like this one. I'm going to be watching it for this entire week. So the next one I'm gonna, um, I want to talk about very quickly is Boeing Stock ticker symbol BA. And Boeing actually has been seeing some pretty nice recovery here ever since the tragic accident of the 737 crashing, the second 737 in a six-month window. That ended up taking the stock from nearly $450 per share all the way down here to $366 per share, where we ended up finding support 
on an old resistance from back in really the, the October month of 2018. And now, take a look at what we're seeing here, guys. I actually talked about this on Thursday's video that if we were to break the 395 resistance and the one or the 180 SMA resistance as well, this was going to be a huge bullish move on Boeing and we could potentially be seeing 415 again. But now, since we got rejected clearly on this past trading day or the past two trading days on Thursday, no, was it on Thursday? No, it was not on Thursday. It was on Friday that we got rejected all the way down to about 382 here after market hours. Now it seems like we want to retest that 50 simple moving average support here. And if I just pop back over here, you guys can see what I'm talking about, which has been a support. You know, over the past couple of trading days, we can see we tested it back on the 28th of March in 2019, where we ended up popping above it or really holding above it for a higher low. And from there, we continued this little higher, high, higher low pattern until we got rejected by that 180 SMA. So the gist of this, guys, is for this upcoming week, make sure and just keep an eye on, are we going to maintain the 50 SMA here on Boeing? If we break this on Boeing, we could be shooting right back down to, let's say, where can we see this? Maybe $375 per share could be the next support here on Boeing. And let me drag that out for you all so you can see. That was roughly a previous resistance from back in the beginning of November. So maintain or just keep an eye. Are we going to maintain the 50? If we don't, we're going to be pushing back down to 375 most likely here on a technical basis. And from there, if we break 375, guys, we could be shooting right back down to that or the support rather from a couple of weeks ago at $365. Nonetheless, I think Boeing does offer a pretty good swing opportunity if we end up holding these levels that I'm talking about in this video. So watch those for this upcoming week, ticker symbol B. A. So IIPR is actually another one that we ended up getting called out. And in terms of IIPR here, I don't know much about this uh, stock at all. I can see it's in innovative industrial properties. Is this a REIT? Maybe it's a REIT. I'm not too sure exactly. Don't take my word for that. But we can see over the past couple of uh, months here, this is literally a textbook, beautiful uptrending pattern, right? Higher highs, higher lows. We're maintaining the 180 SMA. We're maintaining the 50 simple moving average as a support. We're bouncing right on those levels and we're just continuing to push up, push up, push up, right? And what I'm seeing here is that we pulled back from $95 down to about $76, and we maintained a new higher low from the previous, right? This is not too hard of a stock, a REIT, whatever it is to do analysis on, right? Because it's very textbook. It's very, uh, you know, simple to understand. But one thing I want to point out to you guys is really, we ended up breaking a previous resistance here at $80 on this reversal to the upside, which is a good sign. And now we're at a resistance again under the 50 simple moving average. So with this, you know, with this uh, REIT or stock, you know, it's very simple, right? Are we going to break the 50 SMA? If we break that, we're going to be shooting up for at least $95 or $92, 90-ish dollars, which would put us at the next resistance and from 84, 83, wherever we can enter once we break out of there, up to $90, that does offer a nice margin. And of course, if we continue the higher high pattern, if we push to a new high, there's going to be even more than that, right? So from 84, let's say up to $90, that's roughly about 6, 7%. If we push to a higher high, let's say hypothetically $100, that's going to be 15%. But be careful, you know, with stocks like this, REITs, ETFs, whatever we're watching, you know, the higher they push, the higher highs, you know, all these things, if the higher we push up, you know, we're going to end up seeing a retracement again, right? But for now, we're seeing a nice little recovery. And once we break that, guys, that's going to be a good technical uh, point for us to start buying, putting money in here for a swing trade. Me personally, I'm going to be watching this one and you do your own research. Don't just buy based on my opinion. That is not how you're going to become a self-sufficient trader over time. So let's take a look at BBY. This is Best Buy stock, another one that was called out. And 
let's just get our handy dandy little drawing tool out so we can see some resistances because based off my eye right here, based what I'm seeing, we're actually right at a resistance right now. So this one, it's kind of a bit overbought from my just uh, brief analysis here that I'm looking at it. The RSI is very overbought here. We're at about 71, 73. And if you guys want to see a more in-depth video on the RSI, I actually uploaded one about a week or two ago. Go check that out. Just type in relative strength index Stasser Fest on the bar, the YouTube search bar, and that'll pop up. But let's get back to BBY very quickly. You know, like I said, very overbought here on the RSI. It seems like we've had minimal pullbacks in terms of Best Buy over the past couple of trading weeks, which again, kind of makes me scared, right? Makes me scared. I don't really like getting into a stock that is really not at a pullback with my personal style of trading. This one's very pushed up, very overbought again, and we're at a technical resistance right now at about $75. But let's say we break this resistance, right? Hypothetically speaking here, let's say we break this resistance and we end up maintaining it as a new support for a couple of days. Maybe we get the, the R side to get pushed back a little bit. Let's say we pop up here, we pull back the R side, pulls back a little bit. Maybe this could be a good entry back up to $77, which is the next resistance. But based on the other stocks and ETFs that I talked about in this video and some other ones that I'm watching, you know, this one is not too attractive in my personal opinion. There's a lot of other opportunities out there, in my opinion, again, that are better on a technical speaking basis. But, you know, keep an eye on it. I'm not saying it's going to go down. No one's going to know right? No one can predict that kind of stuff. But just based off what I'm seeing, I think it's a little bit risky right now to get into BBY. But let me know in the comment section what you guys think about this. So one that I'm actually seeing that I've been tracking, um, one of the subscribers and Discord members brought this one to my attention about a month, and a, a month ago, a month and a half, I forget exactly when. But this one is LYB. And LYB, we're seeing here on a uh, on the 180 uh, uh, what's it called the 184 hour chart here LYB has actually been trading in this horizontal pattern and I covered this one a couple of videos ago for that same discord member and subscriber that shouted it out and he was saying okay I think when I covered it it was at about like $85 or something like that and he was asking me what do I think about it and I was saying okay I think LYB is in a horizontal pattern here very very obvious we've been seeing the support roughly at about $84 to $85 the resistance at about $90. And I was saying in that video again a couple of videos ago how there was potential since we were seeing support here in the brief pop on LY LYB, there was potential that we were going to get to that previous resistance at around $90, especially if we, if we were to break the moving average resistances. So now that we're here a couple of days later, we can see it completely filled that gap and we actually broke out of the horizontal resistance here, the horizontal pattern resistance, which is actually a very bullish move, right? When we break out of a resistance, especially a horizontal pattern resistance, very bullish move. And we see here, we actually popped up to nearly $93 per share. If I go to the five day, five minute, we can see, yeah, exactly $93 per share. And now it seems like LYB wants to pull back and maybe retest those levels at about $90 to $91, which we can see, it seems like it is doing. We're seeing a green bar here on the 184 hour chart. Pretty good sign. So for this upcoming week, guys, if we're hopping here to, to this trend line very quickly, I want to see, A, are we going to retest that level, which it seems like we're doing? Are we going to, you know, start to push back up and maybe fill up to the next resistance, which is at about $95, $96? These are some things that I'm going to be watching. Or B, let's say option B here, or scenario B, 
We end up retesting this level. Then we break that level and slowly start to get back into the high 80s. That's going to be something that is going to shine me away from LYB because at that point, if we break down this level, you know, we're going to have to find a support either on the, the moving averages here at about $86, maybe back down all the way to $83. I know that seems a bit far fetched, but it can happen if we do break these levels. These are just a couple of things I'm watching, but as of right now, on Sunday that I'm recording this video. You know, it's very solid looking in terms of technicals, but just keep an eye on it tomorrow morning, pre-market hours, you know, just keep an eye on the overall markets, the futures. What are we going to be looking like? So let's talk about very quickly, now that we got about eight stocks out of the way, these are the main stocks, right? But there's a couple of ETFs that I'm actually watching as well, but I'm more watching the pair of ETFs versus just one of the ETFs, right? And one of these is actually uh, gold, right? The, the gold futures here, they have two ETFs that we watch, one being JNUG and one being JDS. T. On the bigger charts here, gold looks like it's a bit bearish, right? We see the 50 SMA cross below the 180 SMA, which is a bearish sign. But if we're taking a look on some other support levels here, you know, gold's been fighting to hold the 1296 level. And at the close of the market on Friday, we maintained that level. So this week, just keep an eye on gold. Are we going to end up popping into the $1,300 level? If we do, that's going to maintain or not really maintain, confirm the bounce on the support. And we could be headed back up to test that 50 SMA and that 180 SMA resistance. And let's say we were to break those resistance levels, we could be pushing out up next to the next resistance, which is going to be at 1310, which is actually a previous support. So I think there's a lot of potential here in the gold ETFs, just depending on where gold pushes itself, right? And if we're just going back to JNUG very quickly, which is the bull ETF that goes up whenever gold goes up, JNUG here actually ended up maintaining that $9 support. It popped up from there and it had a very strong recovery day or recovery these past two days on Thursday and Friday. So will this recovery continue? Will gold continue to push up? This is something that I'm watching for this upcoming week. And of course, if gold tanks, let's say it gets to the 1280s again, you know, JDST, which goes up whenever gold goes down, is going to be a good bet. So just keep an eye on those two ETFs. Natural gas as well, guys. This is one that we trade a bunch, UGAS and DGAS. Keep an eye on these. We saw natural gas hit a low at about 263 this past uh this past week, and we're pushing back up here. So we can see the past um couple of days here, you know. Natural gas has been really being pushed down, lower lows, lower highs, all of that stuff. So before we get into degas, which goes up whenever natural gas goes down, we have to make sure we're getting rejected by this 180 SMA resistance, which has been a resistance here over the past couple of uh, trading days and trading weeks, honestly. But let's say we break out of that level, that's going to be a point in time where on a technical basis, we're going to have to look at UGAS, which goes up whenever natural gas goes up, because that's going to be a pretty bullish reversal on natural gas. So this week, just watch natural gas, you guys keep an eye on uh, you know this future very closely. It will serve you guys well. So I'm going to end off this video here. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to go down below and hit that like button. If you're new to the channel, feel free to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you're notified every time that I do make a video. Drop a comment. Let me know what you guys think about these stocks. What are you watching? What are your plans for this week? Are you taking any long positions, swing positions? Are you shorting the market? I would love to know. Leave a comment down below. I appreciate everybody out there watching, taking your time out of your day to watch the video. It does mean a lot to me. I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a great rest of your weekend. Good luck this week. Peace out.